Hi there, welcome to the latest news and discussions on the Jay Slater missing person case. Today, got some articles to be reading through. Got a handful just to check for any consistencies or inconsistencies of information being distributed. Some of the key topics and themes of today are around the police, the searchers being called off now, which could be a shock to some people. The true reasoning behind it, we'll see the articles mention. If not, I'll give you my own analysis and thoughts on the matter towards the end of this video. So feel free to stick around. And then I've got a couple of other articles, one of which to do with the family vowing to obviously keep on going and keep on trying to search and with possibilities of that GoFundMe money being used in addition to fly more people out there, such as family members and friends. I can understand some people have been sceptical about those situations. Is it a free holiday? Is it being exploited? Or is it simply to compensate for, you know, the personnel, the authority calling off the searches to maintain that balance and flow of people? Because you can't have one person searching everywhere. Obviously, you need a handful for it to be efficient. But nevertheless, we need to take a look, look at the articles to get a better understanding of the situation. And for people that are regular to my channel, but maybe new to this case, some of the information, what we may go through could be a bit repetitive, but it may help you learn. And as for new viewers and those who are more experienced and have more knowledge on this case, welcome. Feel free to share your thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section. And if you are interested in other missing person cases, mysteries or true crime, as example, top right corner of the screen where that eye symbol is, if you click on that, you find some playlists to other cases, Kenny Veach, Noah Presgrove, Dylan Rounds, things like that. So it's all available there. Without further ado, let's get straight into the latest news. The first title reads, Jay Slater search called off in Tenerife after dramatic development. Now, I'll be honest with you, the term dramatic development, that could imply a breakthrough in the case, which suggests that where they have been searching isn't the spot, maybe elsewhere is, and they're relocating. But it did say that the search has been called off. What, so there's no need to look for a body now? There's no need to look for a missing person now because they're no longer missing? The talk about the case still remains open. At what point does it become a cold case? I wonder. Maybe a few questions. But I do sense that in this title, there, there is a form of exaggeration by dramatic development. So by the time we finish reading this article, we'll see if it, if it really was a development or not. Something tells me there isn't, but, you know, let's give it a chance. Police hunting for missing Jay Slater. Hunting. Normally you use the term hunting when you're going after like a criminal, a person that's escaped from a prison. <laughs> that's unusual wording. Anyway, Jay Slater in an area of Tenerife say they have ended their search for the 19-year-old after nearly two weeks of looking for him. Now, if you talk about long term, if you compare it to other missing person cases out there, two weeks doesn't sound that long, does it? But when you get in the mind that there is a person walking about in the open, the environment, the terrain the temperature as well. Two weeks is quite a lot, especially if they've not been seen since. Um, they've not had water, food, things like that. Got a photo there, some of the search. There we go. Search, yep. Yeah. Including specialist. So, police looking for missing Brit. Ended search after nearly two weeks. Disappeared Monday, June 17th after trying to make a long walk back to accommodation on the island whilst there for the festival. Princess Bricklayer travelled to Airbnb in the village of Masca, about a 40-minute drive from where he was staying before trying to walk back. The civil guard today, June 30th, said the near-fortnight-long search, which has involved sniffer dogs, helicopter, mountain rescue experts looking in mountainous terrain, had been brought to an end. A spokeswoman said the search operation has now finished, although the case remains open. Now, was horseback used at any point, or was it too rocky, the terrain, to do that? I just remember in the US when it came to you know, the Dylan Rounds, um, Aidan Clune, and oh, I can't remember some other person where they was using horseback because of the mountainous area to get about quicker. Right, they're missing, yep. 
The search formally ended at 10am on Sunday morning with media turning up to the usual viewpoint meeting spot at the search site only to find it deserted. Just 24 hours earlier, around 30 rescue workers and dozens of journalists covered on the area have converged following an appeal for help from volunteers by Tenerife's top cop, Angel, Angel Sanz Coronado. Coronado. There we go. I am quite untuned my accent yet this early on in the morning. A well-placed source said, The daily operation which has been going on in and around Massacre, close to where Jay was last seen, has been brought to an end. If any information comes in that merits a new search, where it will be acted upon. Right, so awaiting new tips, new info. Now, I couldn't find it on the spot, but maybe we can look at it another time. So about a person um, speaking to a news crew about seeing Jay slipping off the side of a hill or a mountain. I mean, the way it's worded or said, it sounds very casual. I mean, did anyone act upon it or not? Has anyone searched in that spot to determine what the situation was? Because even if it wasn't Jay, right? Just imagine someone did slip and fall and got injured. Even if it wasn't Jay, it's another person. Has it been looked into? I wonder. Now, what's what's here? My understanding is Jay's parents have been informed of what obviously is a major development. Nothing of any relevance was found during yesterday's large-scale search. So the search area where they were anticipating to maybe find him, because there was no traces at all, that's considered a major development. In that, well, he's not here. He must be elsewhere. And if he's elsewhere... Could that suggest he's still alive? Maybe. But if you're just constantly walking around, you can only do that for so long because you do need you do need food, water, sleep, and things like that. Officers on Saturday were still claiming they would carry on the search, and there were no plans to end it. However, in a sign fought by many that people were losing hope, just six volunteers turned up including British TikToker and amateur mountaineer Paul Arnott, 29, who is helping the family from Oswald Twizzle, Lancashire. Right, okay. So only six people showed up and there's a there's like a sense where atmosphere is disappointment. But realistically, at the end of the day, other people have their own lives and responsibilities. Not everybody can just pack up and go over to start searching and stuff. I think simply spreading awareness online and helping keep cases alive is does its own thing too. Of course, you'll get the good and bad with it, but you get the ones in between who are realistic. I look at it from all angles and perspectives. Jay was last seen by a local resident in Masculine in Northwest Tenerife just after 8am on June 17th walking northwards along the road out of the village after stopping to ask her for directions. His phone last pinged near to a lookout point where search teams gathered yesterday to begin the last day of the operation. Friend Lucy Law Lucy Law said Jay had called her shortly after he was last seen to say he was thirsty and had no water. Obviously, that's not a good thing already, right? The final moments of the last known contact was, I'm thirsty, got no water, dehydration. Mm. Just 1% battery on his phone as well. Civil Guard says the parallel investigation by police investigators, which they're not sharing information on, is continuing despite the suspension of the visible mountain search in and around Masca. Okay, so police investigation. Certain information hidden. Have the family been informed or are they left in the dark as well? I mean, when things start going quiet, but there is still active stuff going on in the background, it'll be for good reason, of course, maybe legal reason as well, depending. You know, that tends to be more true crime then. But maybe if the police, the authorities have got word or tips, intel on what could be happening or where Jay could be at and if anyone else is somehow involved, third party, whatever... They don't want to make anything public because it might blow the cover. It might ruin the investigation. It might cause people to flee or to panic. Who knows, right? The major investigation has so far seen the likes of top detective Mark William Thomas head to Tenerife to help find answers for the family. The case, meanwhile, has been mirrored in speculation from online sleuths and armchair detectives providing baseless theories. 
Oh no, here we go again. We use the trendy lines and labels, sleuths. One of the cringiest words out there. It's definitely sheepish language. Armchair detectives. I mean, not everybody sits on a chair when recording. Some people just simply stand up. Some people have a chair with no arms on it, so... <laughs> It's not exactly an accurate description, isn't it? To talk about providing baseless theories, the whole point of a theory and an idea is kind of based on an opinion, which with time can transpire into a possible fact. What comes along with it, as a form of common sense, hopefully, and not completely outlandish or out of this world, the ideas, the concepts of what could have happened, what started, how it ended, the midpoint, who's involved, where exactly, all kinds of suggestions, right? And along the way, as you map it together, indirectly or directly, you make sense, you use certain material, piece it together, stitch it like a jigsaw puzzle, and then maybe along the way, evidence does come out which might reinforce your theories and ideas, or it could debunk it, and then you just provide an update afterwards. So theories aren't just like bases, like useless. There might not have enough foundation or structure behind it or support at this moment, but you never know what may happen in the future. And of course, with me, I've got extensive experience when it comes to theories and ideas, which turned out to be somewhat fact. Okay, so it's under control, providing that the theories and ideas to begin with have a form of common sense to it, of course. What else? Address reporters on the island Wednesday, Mr. Williams Thomas appealed for two British men who Jay left with on the Sunday night after meeting them whilst out to come forward. The Civil Guard says it has since ruled the duo out. No foul play there. Okay. So, let's move on to the next one. Got a collection here. Jay Slater missing. Latest family vowed to carry on looking for teen in Tenerife after police call off search. Spanish police have called off the search. Yeah, we saw that six minutes ago. Hmm, pretty recent. Now, if you wonder why it's blank in, in between, it's because I've got the reader mode on. So if there's adverts or any of that BS, it's cancelled out, which is good. There we go. You think? What's this? Jay Slater's father makes six-word plea to son. So it's probably a video. That's why it didn't show. Right, get across that. Jay Slater's family have vowed to carry on looking for him despite Spanish police calling off to search for the missing teenager nearly two weeks after he vanished. Rachel Hargraves, a close friend of Mr. Slater's heartbroken parents, Debbie Duncan, 55 years of age, and Warren Slater, 58, said nothing had changed and they would continue scouring the rugged terrain of Northern Tenerife for him. Now, all I would say is, okay, it's normal for friends, family members, loved ones, whoever, to keep on searching because they're passionate, they want that closure, they want to bring their loved one home in whatever way possible okay that's that's normal that's human nature but if authorities have called off searches and the experts are no longer present and it's just the family out there could be considered amateur when it comes to that environment the terrain hiking about searching around who is there to look out for the family or the friends in case anything went wrong or went downhill right because whilst you do have an expert out there previously searching about, they know the dangers, what to expect, what to look out for, what to avoid. But what about general public who are searching? Could it get to a point where general public family members who are searching end up getting injured themselves or a person gets lost along the way? Are radios being used? Because when it's come to public searches elsewhere in like cases in the US, I think it was like Aiden Clune. Dylan Ramsey said, make sure you've got a radio with you so you can tune in and let people know where you are and where you're heading out and when you make it back. I'm sure that will probably be implemented here, but it's still uh, kind of like a formal procedure for full-on safety, long-term, depending on how long it lasts as well. Spanish police said the hunt from 19 yard had ended with the case remaining open. So it's at least open at this moment in time as grueling search entered its 13th day. 19 old disappeared two weeks ago. There we go. We see most of this, so we'll just hover over it. Travelling there, Jay, with two men he had met at the festival, around 27 miles further south on the island. 
and it was Buena Vista del Norte. There we go, we've got the accent in now. It comes after the teenager's father, Warren Slater, revealed he was disappointed that just six volunteers turned out to join the search for his son after police issued an appeal for help. I mean, okay, a couple of people from the UK have come on over. It's quite a big move, that. Locals, people in the area haven't, exactly. Could the argument be put across that because the person is like foreign to the country, they're not from there, they're not local, but that's why locals haven't volunteered themselves. Like, if you had a community and a person well-known in that community has gone missing, there might be more likely chances of the, lo the locals joining on in to search and help. Um, but, you know, you talk about disappointment when it comes to people overseas coming on in. I mean, you can't have high expectations because, as I said, everybody's got their own life and People may have their own problems or responsibilities, maybe busy, caught up in things. I mean, you could argue and say the, the TikTokers, all the typical influencers that may have more time, why did they not hop on over over there? Because let's just be realistic. Um, when you do get the influencers, not being specific as to who, but just in general, certain influencers can grasp onto something and like, really drag it out and drain it and go on and on and on and uh, they might even try and incorporate it in terms of getting a free holiday a free trip benefiting out of looking into something i'm just surprised it didn't turn out here maybe people don't understand where i'm coming from or on my wavelength but i'm sure some will what else do we have teenager last seen wearing a white t-shirt so it would stand out in fairness with shorts and trainers and his phone shows his last location at the rural de Deno park at 8 50 a.m on monday 17th of june jay slater case doesn't add up ex-met officer says as he urges spanish police to let the british force help oh have they not been able to get involved yet Spanish police urged to accept help from British investigators in the hunt for Jay Slate in Tenerife. As a former police officer warned, things just don't add up. Policing expert Graham Wetton, who's in Metropolitan Police for 30 years, said he has been poring over the evidence in the hunt for the missing 19-year-old. He believes there were too many inconsistencies in the mystery of his disappearance and called for detectives to look more closely at the days before he vanished. Do we have any bullet points that would be helpful? Mystery, British men of no relevance to investigation. Spanish police have declared that the two British men who put up missing British teenager Jay Slater the night before he disappeared are of no relevance to the investigation. But did those guys say how Jay appeared at the time? Did he look okay? Was there any issues? Was there any conflict? Not with him, but any of the people about with Jay? right? Sometimes you do have to work backwards to understand what condition were they in when, when you last saw them, how did they appear, did they look disturbed, did they look worried, were they calm, were they happy, did they have any negative run-ins with any other strangers here and there, things like that. 19-year-old vanished nearly two, yeah, we saw that. Uh, Chibrano Martin, head of Civil Guards Green, Green Mountain Rescue Unit, said those men have spoken to and they don't have any relevance whatsoever for the case. So they might not have any relevance, but it would have been nice if it was um, elaborated a bit. Family vowed to carry on, yep. Jay Slater's family have vowed to carry on searching for him despite Spanish police calling off the search, yep. Yep, nothing has changed. We may have seen this before, so that's we'll go through it quickly meeting police today. Jay Slater's family are reportedly meeting with Spanish police today after authorities called off. Okay. The mother's on the right there, in case you're wondering. TikToker helping search uh, criticises police for PR exercise. Huh. A TikToker who flew out to help the search for Jay Slater has criticised the local police for treating the search for Jay Slater as a PR exercise. What, the police seeing it as a fake missing person case? Is that what you mean? Paul Anart was the only Briton other than Slater's father to join the final official day of the search on Saturday. Tenerife civil guard called off the search on Sunday, but Arnott called them out on his social media as he grew frustrated with the slow pace of the search. In quotes, this is a massive PR thing, I'm telling you now. He said nothing but there were people everywhere and nobody's doing anything. 
He went on to ask officials to take his name off the search list so he could search independently. Mm. Adding, everyone is still in their cars. It's all a big thing. It's all chat, chat, chat. Right. TD TV detective. We've seen them. Detailed picture of Jay's movements before he went missing as he continues his private investigation. A very detailed picture of movements. That's interesting. Yep. Yeah. Who helped investigate... Ah, William Thomas. Investigate Nicole Bully's disappearance. Urged his family to use the GoFundMe donations to pay for private detectives to keep the search alive. Well, wasn't it when it came to Nicola Bully? They're trying to figure out where was she. Okay, near a bench site with a dog. Where did she go from there? Ended up being found in the water. I don't know if it was... Was it a river? But it was like further down the stream. And it was found much later... When you think, how come they didn't come across the body much earlier then? There seemed to be a bit of incompetence then with the police with Nicola Bully. And you also had the TikTok side of the influencers and just TikTokers in general claiming that they found items in clothing of Nicola Bully, that they found this and found that. And it turned out to be a bit of BS. So, mm, just goes to share around the world, can be a bit messy, a bit inconsistent. Like a spatial awareness as well, possibly, I would argue. Anyway, it does say here that urged Thomas, his family, the Slater family, to use the GoFundMe donations to pay for private detectives to keep the search alive. But, I believe it was worded elsewhere, that the family wanted to fly other family members out and friends to help search for Jane. And that did receive a bit of criticism from the general public because it was being interpreted as, oh, so you've raised that money for your missing son, about £42,000 or so, roughly, and now you're using it just to jet people out on a free holiday. Is that it? That's what some people have suggested. Okay. What else do we have here? He wrote on Twitter, Twitter being X, although the police search in the mountains and around Masca has concluded... The police investigation into Jay Slater's disappearance remains ongoing. In regards to our investigation, we have been able to speak to important witnesses and now have a very detailed picture of Jay's movements over 16 and 17th, along with important background information. Hmm. Is that background information related to how he ended up going missing and why he still remains missing? We still have a number of outstanding actions, but have given the family a preliminary breakdown of findings in light of the police search ending, I've suggested the family should use the GoFundMe to continue the search using experts in searching. But the family supposedly want to use that money more so on amateurs, which are friends and family members. Mm, maybe that's where the criticism comes in. You're going to use the money in the whole point of trying to find your son. You'd probably use the money where it's best value. So the experts that know what they're doing. Because if you do get friends and family members coming on in trying to search, not only are they amateur to the area and amateur to searching in dangerous terrain, but there'll be a conflict of interest as well because of the emotional connection. Jay Slater's mother hits out at Facebook trolls mocking teen in Missing Tenerife. Hmm. Ex-British police suggest Jay Slater may not be missing. So the bit back there, it just says Jay Slater's mother hits out Facebook trolls. What's that all about? No, there's no link. I thought there was going to be a link to something, but there wasn't. A bit weird. But if we talk about Facebook trolls or people mocking Jay Slater, you might get some unnecessary mocking, but then other stuff which may come across as mocking or trolling, but it's just simply being realistic, is highlighting the past of Jay Slater, right? And as we saw, there was some resistance recently, which you would expect. I predicted it. You know, I make many predictions, and most of it tends to be correct. But nevertheless... When it comes to the resistance, um, oh, you know, that's the past. You now it's all about the future. Yeah, but if we're saying that this person's clean, pure, truly innocent, never done anything wrong, well, that would be incorrect, wouldn't it? So it's just about being realistic. So people know one's role, one's past, where they come from, etc. It fills the understanding of the case at hand, and that applies to any case with any missing person out there, to get a full picture as to... What could link, what may not link, but what is a fact, right? Even if it's in the past. Um, but you know, some counterpoints where people are saying, well, what about Jay? Jay was attacked in the past when he was much younger, okay? By the same people or different? 
it, um, you know, if that's 100% true, that's very unfortunate. But then you can put the counter counterpoint to it by saying, right, yeah, so you've been attacked, this has happened. So then what? That's the reasoning for beh behind joining a gang for that protection element to appear more intimidating, to fight back, to take it out on other innocent people or supposedly innocent people at a time. Let's just put it that way. So it's, a, it's basically a chain effect of this, you know, similarities to, oh, you get bullied, right? So then what do you do then? You turn into the bully, bully someone else. Then that person that's been bullied turns into a bully, then bully somebody else. Chain reaction, it's like a food cycle, never ending. It doesn't make you any better. So as people are trying to excuse Jay Slater's past by saying he's been on the receiving end of the stuff, before that, well, in a way, you should know better not to become it or lay yourself to that standard as to what you've been subjected to in the past. You should become a better person. Not not being a do-gooder, not being vulnerable, but, you know, acting of an appropriate nature. And I think that's been lost with time. So, yeah, you will get some Jay Slater apologist, just like how you get delusional dog owners, like I said, unrelated, but still exist out there. They lack the comprehensive skills, the understanding, the multiple perspectives. They're egocentric. They're impetuous. They're ignorant, arrogant. They're not useful. Okay? Problematic people. Let's move on, though. Ex-British police suggest may not be missing. Hmm. So if he's not missing, but he can't be found, you're suggesting he could be with other people and is perfectly okay and having a good time. Former British police officer has suggested that Jay Slater might not be missing at all, and police should thoroughly investigate his disappearance in Tenerife. Graham, who served in Met, okay. Take another look after the law enforcement authorities called off the search. It seems to me on the face of it, they're just focusing on the mountain, but I would hope they're looking at other, other avenues, and those include criminality, he said. Now, I saw a comment yesterday about a watch, maybe it had been stolen. I've not come across that yet in any of these articles, but if a watch was stolen, who stole it in the first place? And I'm not saying that this is the case, but on a theory, on a suggestion, on an idea, concept only, what, Jay could have stole a watch or got a hold of one, and another person wanted it back, got revenge, or kidnapped him for it as a punishment? Is that a suggestion? Criminality behind it as to him disappearing. Hmm. I've been following this case closely and discussing it with colleagues, and it's certainly a very bizarre one. Lots of things just don't add up, the ex-cop added. So to revert back to some of the original points we we're looking at, in the mountainous area where they've been searching, they found no strong clues. No bones, no body, no blood indicates well, he's not here. So he must be elsewhere. So instead of calling the search off in general, I can understand calling the search off or even pausing it in that particular area. Why not expand elsewhere? Possibly. But the area's got quite a big surface area and there's no other clues to go off from the point of the mountain. You could say it's like finding a needle in a haystack. And to be honest with other cases, I do understand that like when it comes to the desert terrain, even in those cases where it may be flatter and easier to transverse across on ground, there's so much distance in sight and, you know, all kinds of, you know, it depends if you're looking for a person on ground level or underground if they've been buried. That'd be a true crime related situation here. It's not treated as true crime. Is it treated as foul play yet? Hmm. Mains up for debate. Here's why so little progress has been made in fighting Jay. Located in a steep valley in the beautiful Royal de Tenno Park, the remote village of Masca is a ha haven for hikers and adventurers travelling to Tenerife. Yet for the family and friends of Jay Slater, it has become the place of nightmares because it rugged langs la ah. Rugged landscapes and steep ravines easily hide clues which could shed light on a teenager's disappearance. Having seen the search firsthand, it's understandable how such little progress has been made in 12 days. The young Britain's phone was last located near a stretch of road by the Mirando de la Cruz de Hilda Café with cacti and dense shrubbery on either side, making it slow work for helicopters, drones, sniffer dogs to comb through the area. Right. Let's move on. Is that about it? I don't know why you get these like little titles, subtitles with no description underneath. I think it's a bit stupid, if I'll be honest with you. 
and last but not least, Jay Slater might not be missing. So unless this continues on from what we're looking at, we may have to skip for it a bit. Cops must find out if there was third party involvement, says expert cop. Jay's family has vowed to keep searching. Yeah, we've seen that. Might not be missing. Third party involvement. Spanish police yesterday called off search. Yep, Metropolitan, 30 years, things just don't add up. So we're getting a consistency. Well, there's some repetitive language, there's a bit of consistency, and of course that's what you would want. Oh, is that Graham there? Right. Vanished, yep, drones, dogs, used, looking for clues. Accepts an offer from the British counterparts, could help. Seems to me, the face of it, they're just focusing on the mountain. Yep, we've seen that closely, discussing it with colleagues, yep. Key witnesses in the case, but soon have to declare them. Oh, the two guys he came across over there. Jay's loved ones have not given up hope. Nothing has changed. What's this? Moment top brick climber scours Tenerife ravines for signs of Jay Slater skidding down mountain after Pal heard him slip. After Pal? What, his friend heard him slip? That just sounds a bit weird, that. Oh, yeah, I, I heard my pal just slip. Hmm. Well, if it wasn't your pal that slipped, who was it then? You're just hearing things. It's random, these claims. And it's the way people say it so casually. It's like, are they really there with it? Are they being serious or not? Still in Tenerife, the parents Debbie Warren and brother Zach. Okay. Speak, speaking before the search ended, Jay's mum, Debbie, described being at her wits and following her son's disappearance whilst dad Warren said his family are in a living hell. After going to a rave, met some guys, shared a final Snapchat from their air, B and B of a hand. Okay, it's seven thirty AM. Right, been in the mountainous area. Jay then tried to make his way back to his holiday accommodation. Uh, eleven hour walk away. Yeah, I remember hearing that really early on. An eleven hour walk. I mean who would be doing an 11 hour walk, even if you were in a country where the temperature's reasonable? Unless, you know, you're trying to do full on exercise, but if you just casually get in about and you don't intend on doing full on exercise, you wouldn't be covering that distance and that, that time it would take, to be honest. And on top of it, it all comes down to the environment you're in, the terrain and the temperature. And doing an 11 hour walk in that, probably not a good idea. Could succumb to the environment at any point. Would this be considered? Has any comparisons been made from this to the, was it Michael Mosley case where he was last seen walking off, going a bit off-road, off-terrain, and due to the intense heat, he ended up collapsing, succumbing to the environment. It wasn't found immediately, but when people were around searching and nearby, they weren't that far from the body. So that was kind of a weird experience, that, to not know that where you are, the person who's dead is not far away. But the comparisons can only go so far, right? Because with Jay Slater, if he was walking from point A to point B and in between succumbed to the environment early on if the temperature was that bad, I mean, surely he would have been found by now. And he hasn't. So that's where the mystery lies. It does say that. But at around 8.50am, he made a desperate call to his friend Lucy saying he was lost in the middle of nowhere and had just 1% battery on his phone. Well, I don't remember hearing that in the previous articles, but I do now. Take a man, I'm reading this for the first time. Bear with me. But a desperate call being made, lost, middle of nowhere. Did he then move on from that point? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that the we're able to trace the phone ping. There's not been any talk about Jay's phone being found, so likely if you want to find the phone, you'll have to find Jay, if it's on him, if he's put it in his pocket, maybe, or whatever he's got for storage. But what about the phone pings? That would be an important place to start. But, in fairness, with 1% battery, from that moment that call was made onwards, that phone would have died pretty quick, likely. And with the phone being off, and not being in use, no apps running in the background, no more pings, very limited. Jay also said he had cut his leg on a cactus and needed water. Cutting your leg on a cactus, is it fatal? For the most part of it, no. Do you cut your leg on a cactus? It's not a, a cut, kind of like being stabbed in a way, isn't it? But just not as, not as brutal. 
Um, is it fatal? No. Unless it became infected somehow, maybe. But the, the bit about needing water dehydrated, obviously, it's not a good... It's not looking good, the outcome of it. It's unclear whether the call to Brad was separate to the one made to Lucy. Oh, okay. So as you saw, there was a bit more to that article lower down, though that was about the timeline, the original from start to, I guess, the current point of where the case lies right now. I felt that maybe the majority of people watching this may already be informed about the timeline and already know about it. So I didn't want to bore anyone with that. But I can always do a separate video about that part and look through the timeline, try and understand it, map it out, maybe a map analysis at some point if there is time. I'll take that into consideration. Am I still sceptical of this case? To an extent, of course. As with the previous video and the first one that I did, that was just being realistic, making observations, whilst other delusional humans out there don't quite see it or acknowledge, which is typical. But that aside, it is a mystery, this. You do have, once again, a bit of a rural, rugged area, as it tends to be with quite a few of these missing person cases. And obviously, in, in an area where there'll be limited surveillance cameras, I mean, okay, if you're in the populated areas, you're in a little town, you're in the communities, you might have cameras, but when you go further and far, when you go into the mountainous area, it becomes limited. I mean, was there any trail cameras or not? That's the only question I have at this moment in time. And as for the phone pings, well, with it being on 1% battery, even if you did ping that one location and that spot, if you moved on past that point whilst trying to look for civilization, look for help, okay, you get to that spot, that ping, where do you go next? And the other final question I would say, has there been any talk about footprints? I mean, what's the, what's the weather been like out there since? Has it rained at any point? Because there are changes in the temperature and the weather itself. I don't know, it could damage certain evidence that's left behind if there were such as footprints. But I don't think that would be a major problem, especially in Tenerife from the looks of it. But I'm going to acknowledge all these little factors just in case. Um, so I've not really heard much about footprints at this moment in time. Let me know if you've heard about footprints because they can go a long mile in a case when trying to retrace people's steps. And to refer back to the big development in the case and the search being called off, would you say that's good news? Would you say it's bad news? Some people could think, well, that's a bit of a silly point to mention, but sometimes something could be called off because it's no longer needed, either because the search has been called off because they found a missing person and there's a resolve. Or if there was a recovery mission for a dead body, that's been called off now, it's come to an end because they've got the result that they needed. They found what they were looking for, that's it, case closed now. But obviously none of that has come out here, so it's likely that's not the case. Um, the other way of looking at it would be searches have been closed, come to an end, such as in that mountainous area, because they have searched, supposedly at least, and they've not found what they've been intending to look for, which is Jay, his body, or him alive. So it's like, well, we've done what we can here, there's not much more we can do. So that's it. Obviously, it would make sense to search elsewhere. Now, with the family vowing to continue on searching, are they going to go round and round in circles in that mountainous area, or are they going to branch away further afar? There could be arguments to say that, and I don't know if there's a clear pattern across many cases, but when it comes to missing people, even true crime cases, trying to understand what's happened, there can be a lot of information, there can be a lot of talk, a bit of confusion. And sometimes, at the end of it, you get an answer and you think, oh, they were just there. But this person was responsible and all the other stuff wasn't necessary. Uh, I'm not saying that every case is simple, because if they were, they would be solved immediately. But do you like when things are overcomplicated or you look too deep into something and then when you reflect back afterwards and you think, oh, I didn't need to do any of that. All we had to do was start at this point and turn to the left or turn to the right. I mean, you've got to understand the, the condition of the human, the person that's missing, whether you see them as a victim or not, depending on the case, the age of the person, 19, male, Somewhat healthy, I'm assuming. Does exercise? I don't know about that. But like with the Michael Mosley case, much older age, a little bit more vulnerable possibly to the environment, the temperatures, 
you know, conditions like that. Different people respond differently to temperatures. Some may last longer, others may not. Some may be able to go longer without water and others may need it more regularly. It depends on the fitness of the individual as well. These are factors you've got to take in mind. So the fitter and healthier a person is, the longer they might be able to survive, but also the further they may get when trying to find civilization, which means the search will expand and stretch onwards, kind of making it harder. But a person that could have succumbed to the environment quicker, even though that's negative, may be close to where they were last seen. Possibly, because it can apply in some cases. Um, what was the other point I was going to say as to why searches would be called off because they feel like the person isn't missing and that there was material or some kind of tip in the background which hasn't been revealed or can't be to suggest he is elsewhere and he's not exactly missing. I mean, not saying that it is the case, but if there was some kind of footage or another photo, a secret one, found, passed on, and it showed Jay hanging out with a group of people. Didn't look too concerned, didn't look that worried, didn't look hurt or anything like that. You could be thinking, oh, so they've disappeared, but they're not exactly missing because they look quite okay. But you'd think if Jay Slater has a good relationship, gets on well with his family, then there'd be some kind of contact made to inform them. Unless there's, this is just like a, an alternative theory, what other people out there could say. Not me, but what other people could suggest. That is there a possibility that the person goes missing, not literally, family get involved, head on over, want more people to come on over, friends and family, loved ones, raise money in the process, for whatever, for whatever that's actually used for. And then Jay in the background reaches out to family and say, hey, I'm okay, it's fine, but keep on going. Let's get the money rolling again. People could say, what, what a horrible thought. How could you think that? Well, when the world is so effed up and there's a lot of fake people out there and there can be trust issues, you can't help but think. There's no harm in questioning. There's no harm in being a little bit suspicious or a bit sceptical so you don't get screwed over yourself. I mean, if it all turned out to be a scam from the perspective of what other people are suggesting, how will the the rest of people feel who have been really involved in this case or, you know, showed emotion and connection to the missing person and showed support? How would they feel? They'd probably feel a bit screwed over and a bit silly, wouldn't they? I mean, when I think of the Dylan Rounds case, money being raised, GoFundMes, 10,000 here, 10,000 there, and it wasn't even used for the case. It was used for other stuff in the background, unrelated and people were dumb enough to fall for it. But then again, if there's a bit of manipulation, there's a bit of an emotional connection, conflict of interest, it can blind your judgment. And just like with a case when trying to search and act upon it, you need people who aren't connected to that missing person so they can do their job correctly. They've got the knowledge, knowledge of the area, the dangers, and without putting their own self, their own life at risk too much compared to if it was a general public who's not as informed about the area wouldn't have the same expertise. It's the way it is. Well, we'll see what happens next. Just want to give you my additional analysis to this matter. If um, if there is resistance, it is what it is. But welcome to the new people that have come along the way. I'm covering the Noah Presgrove case for most part of it, but I thought I'd just, just cover a bit here just to change it up a little bit because I know sometimes if I get a bit too heavy and focused on one case, not everybody may agree with it. So I just thought... Look at it from a different angle perspective of something else. And you never know along the way, comparisons could be made with other cases I've looked at. Time will tell there. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your patience. Goodbye for now.